Welcome back once more to Woza TV. Um, this is actually the best Christian channel that you're going to find across the internet. Today, we're going to discuss a very important topic like we always do. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to leave your comments. Don't forget to share with your friends who do not have access to this channel. To also have access to the channel. Like the content. Call someone. Tell them that it is time um, um, to tune in to Woza TV. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic, as I said earlier, and my panelists are in the house. And so um, before that, let's, let's just go straight as I welcome my panelists to the program. All right, so um, viewers, um, like I said, my panelists are in the house and uh, we, we know them. We know them, so uh, no need to introduce them again. All right, welcome to uh, the, the studios of Woza TV, uh, my, my, my man of God. You are welcome, General Damascus. And then a woman of God here, so Miss Doreen, you'll be welcome. Thank you. All right, so viewers, um, today's topic for this is to be very interesting. Now, the reason is that this particular subject or this particular topic has been in the system for some time, and um, we have certain men of God speak against it, and we have also another set of men of God who speak for it. And so we are going to talk about it and then um, delve deeper into it and see what scriptures actually say about this particular topic today's topic is um a concept on trousers why <laughs> ladies are wearing trousers okay or should ladies wear trousers because i've heard countless messages bombarding ladies who wear um trousers so i, I think say it, it is it is time we actually go into what the scriptures really say about these things so um, uh, my next question, I want us to take it from where most of these men of God put that scripture from. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. I want us to read that scripture so that uh, I ask my question based on that. If you know, any of you, then you can, you can, you can read. You know, read. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Yeah. The verse number 5. That's right. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Okay. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment okay for all that do so are abomination unto the lord thy god okay so this is um the, the, the test that most men of god pick to teach that women shouldn't um wear trousers uh, uh, first of all my, my first question what is your take on this particular um verse or this particular test what is your take on it okay woman of god what is your take on it Okay, my, my first part of my say is that a test of scripture shall a test of scripture will never mean today what it never meant when it was first written. Okay. And then also that you bet you jump back because we don't come in in Tiasio. Maybe I now school Tiasi. And if I do can you break it down a little? Okay, so a test of scripture will never mean today what it never meant okay. when it was first written. Wait, wait. Okay. A test of scripture, it can never mean today what it was, what it never meant when it was first written. Just to say that the life of a verse of scripture lies within its context. And so, if, if the scripture says that a woman shall not wear that pertaining to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord That's by right. God. It didn't say to Charlie. Yeah. It says, so, it says that a woman should not wear that pertaining to a man. What what shows that this color is for the woman or for the man? No, it's it's the, the, uh, uh, okay. Let, let me let me add let me top up. Top up. So it's it's trousers, not men's wear. Okay, it's it's quite unfortunate that I didn't put on trousers today. <laughs> okay. If I had known this, I would put on trousers. <laughs> you know the difference between the men's trousers and the woman's trousers. And even with that, when you go to the respect of the scripture, let's let's go there. It says that a man shall not take his father's wife, okay. nor discover his father's skirt. Okay. Who are those who put on skirts in this age of ours? Okay. In in Ghana here, mostly females put on skirts. Okay. But this scripture is saying that a man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. Okay. So you could also say that the men, <laughs> the men <laughs> okay. You get it. So it means that. Whatever thing that people are trying to um, put to the scripture now, making the whole verse look like it's for um, the, the putting on of um, women putting on male's clothes, uh, 
we are charging for meals only. It's not like that. We have female clothes. And even when they're supposed to go to Ruth chapter 3. Look. Ruth. Ruth. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 9. And he said, Who who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt. Meaning that it was the man's skirt. Did you get it? Okay. If it was in our days, yes. you would have said that then the men men are rather putting on the women are rather putting on men's clothes, are rather the skirts, not trousers. But the skirt, didn't uh, say. Okay. I, I I want to ask another question. Is it, the skirt here is it a literal skirt? Oh no! It was it was actually how do I describe this? There's another word for it. Get um get door or get something. Get yes. Get yes. So it's not necessarily the skirt that we put on. It was. Much more of a robe, a gido, that they use most oh, of the men. Oh, I call it. Yes. Okay. yes. So it, it doesn't, what I'm trying to say that this whole scripture about the Trinity in 2 verse 5 is not about trousers. Okay. And even if, let's say, we don't really know the meaning of this whole thing, if it says that a woman shouldn't put on that to uh, pretend to a man, it doesn't state trousers. Let's stop being prophetic here and then stop <laughs> using a particular word wow. to, you know, cover everything. No, okay. it didn't say that. Okay, so you. You disagree with people. I, 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 I strongly disagree. <laughs> wow. Man of God, what is your take on this particular uh, test? Um, okay. Hmm. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Yeah. Actually, I have read uh, that particular verse over and over again. I see no trousers. Okay. I see no skirt. Okay. So, I wonder where the. the, the, the the, the, the meaning of people were trying to take that scripture and using it to tell people that to do ladies shouldn't wear trousers stuff. I really do know that that I see that to be in CGSs. Okay. Yes. You see it to be in CGSs. Uh, yeah, okay. that, 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 that is when, when when you think for the scripture. Okay. You draw your meaning into scripture. Okay. You try to put your own yes. mind on the scripture. Yes. But we allow scripture to speak to us, just like our sister said. What the scripture meant back then should mean the same thing. It shouldn't be different. Shouldn't be different. Yes. You see, if we are saying that hmm, women shouldn't wear trousers, then men shouldn't wear skirts. Just like we read from the verse 30, we saw a father's skirt. Father's skirt. That means the skirt belongs to the father. The father wore the skirt. And that is why we are saying that. That may not be a literal skirt. Oh yes, that may not be a literal. Yeah. The advance is what we got the get get them. The get them. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's look at First Samuel fifteen. First Samuel fifteen. Fifteen. Verse twenty-seven. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid upon the skirt of his Hello. mantle, Hello. and it rent. We also see the word skirt. You see, when we talk about skirt, let's say it is the advanced part of uh, what the Scottish people wear, yeah. but that one has it a, long, a little elongated. Do you get it? So, what actually was there is that the scripture never mentioned trousers, but we see the word skirt. But skirt does not also mean what the ladies wear. But an advance of what they were. So, if the scripture is talking about them not wearing a uh, women garment and uh, men not wearing and women not wearing men, we need to know why that statement was made. We need to know the background of that particular story. Okay. Remember that back then there were homosexuals as well. When we say homosexuals, Yes, as they are now. Remember that homosexuals are two people of the same gender living or seeing each other of different genders. That is to say, a man and a man living together, but one sees the other man as a woman. So do the ladies also. The lady sees the other, the fellow lady as a man. Do you get it? Yeah. So when that statement was made, it was a form of a warning. To the people that that law but pretend that you are traveling you are moving from one destination to another destination and that place that you are going 
there are people who are practicing homosexuality so if you dress like that it means that you are going to tell them that oh you are ready for them do you get it so that was a form of caution for them within their jurisdiction where they were going so actually it was custom or tradition that determines what a man or a woman wears and i think that um, even in our days what we wear is actually supposed to be based on culture because um, i think it's when you go to scotland yes men do not put on what we wear now and some people normally say that um when ladies put on trousers it's seductive you know that in some countries ladies covered their entire body yes. and yet people rape them oh yes oh, yeah. so it's not about what we wear that makes people last after you too and whatever these things actually mean i think it's, it's based on culture because if they um they actually used to wear such things or let's say let's say the people of scotland wear skirts you can't see that okay so in ghana here we say women shouldn't wear trousers so when you go there the men should have put on trousers you are assumed for them and let's note that culture changes per generation yeah. So let's take note of all this. Wow, <laughs> viewers, what's my doing today? Drop your comments in the comment section and let us think around. Okay, so that is one scripture that I, I, I said that people normally quote from the Old Testament okay, to make their point. Um, there is another scripture in the New Testament that um, I'm also uh, struggling to understand uh, uh, a bit because people also pick up that scripture. And then they speak against the appearances of women and what they are to put on their hair. With a seven, apart from this rather issue, their hair, their <laughs> this makeup and, and things. There is a scripture that people also quote, okay, to speak against some of these things. So I want us to also read that scripture and then <laughs> you, you can tell us what to think about that scripture too. So uh, I want us to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, the verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Alright, so viewers, if your, your Bible is close by, you can open it as you read along. Or if your Bible is not even close, you can do it to quickly pick it up as you read along. Okay? Alright, so um, I'm reading 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefulness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pelts or costly array this is a scripture that um <laughs> i've heard okay i've seen and heard certain men of god pick it up and tell it you want me to them by regarding their, their their appearance and their looks and their dressing you know? <laughs> I, I don't get it but it, uh, here, i said that is what paul is admonishing or that is what paul is trying to say so what, what is what is your take okay what is your take on this particular scripture with uh, respect to how ladies are, are, uh, dress or their appearance these days uh, uh, oh, any of you can just speak it out okay all right okay okay you see when we are reading we need to pay attention to what we are reading we shouldn't lift scriptures just anyhow. <laughs> Don't take a scripture and then use it anyhow. Misuse a scripture. Mm -hmm. All right. That is how it has been stated. I'm coming. Okay. Which people were that particular letter written to? Which people were that particular letter written to? It was written to the people of the church. Why did Paul write that letter to Timothy? Because it has been reported to him. So he was responding. And that particular church, the ladies in that church, they have something. They were hardworking women. And those same ladies were also noise makers. Okay. So let's let's start from the verse 8. Okay. I would therefore that men pray everywhere. Men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and what doubting. That means that he was correcting a statement, an attitude that was going on within the men. 
Then he moved on to address the people of the, the ladies. He said that in like manner they shouldn't. Why? Let's look at what happened in verse ten. But with good works. But with good works. He's not saying it is wrong, but he's saying that let that not be your focus as a woman in church. But what should be your focus? But with good works. What are the good works? I think we have discussed this yeah. particular issue on attack. So if the person has not watched, you should go back and then go to our uh, and, and watch uh, and, and, and watch that particular yeah. when, where we discuss good works. Good works. It didn't end there. He continued. Let the woman learn in silence with all with all subjection. That is why I said that they were noise makers. That the women, the women in, in the church. church. They were noise makers. But do we have such scenarios in our churches? Oh, church? we have them. Oh, okay. We have them. So he finished here. He said, but I suffer not, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to serve authority over the man, mm. but to be in silence. <laughs> oh, yeah. It does not mean that the lady cannot be called to the altar to come and preach. Some scripture we 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 take and then <laughs> oh oh I, I'm, I'm coming. Let, let, let me discipline the scripture. Okay. Oh wow. I like that thing. Okay, yeah, discipline the scripture. And it's not to say that you cannot call a woman to the altar to come and preach. Okay. Because there were people in the Bible who preached the gospel. Yes, they preached the gospel. Okay. But what he was saying is that since the women are noise making and that they are always rattling their mouth in the church, get, 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 get. instead of them creating confusion in the church, they should keep quiet. They should make the masters of the church should them. When you read other it says that when they want to ask questions, when they go home, they should ask their husbands. So uh, I'm coming. I, I get what you're saying. So you, you are saying that they were noise makers. Yes. Like I don't know, but your noise makers say, "Say, oh, I'm a talkative." Like they are talkative. I'm not sorry, ah. I'm not bad. What they have, they want to show it. You want to show. So instead of maybe and um, there was a service going on, and then instead of maybe them paying attention, they, they, they come and show what they they have on their body, oh, okay. what they are wearing, because they they had. They, more they more like attention seekers. Yes. Oh, okay, all right. So that was what Paul was instructing them. Okay. So if you take that particular verse nine okay. out and you try to explain it, you are doing error to the scripture. Oh, okay. You are abusing that scripture. Okay. That is why I made us to continue to understand that it was a particular issue, issue that was happening in the church, and Paul wanted to draw the attention that that is not the reason why you come to church. The reason why you come to church is to listen to the word and for good works. So your dressing is not what we want in the church. It does not mean when you are going to church, don't look beautiful. My sister, if you can afford Brazilian hair, 70,000 Ghana cities, buy it, put it on. But that shouldn't be the reason why you are going to church. And I think if it was to be our time, Paul would have written the same thing to us. Because when somebody maybe our time would have been giving the worst. Because oh, because is, when somebody shows a dress for a wedding, yeah. and then the best leaves the person. Mm. Now the person, I'm not, like, <laughs> who make a buyer? I have so where would I take it? Because the best has left me. So the lady is looking for a place okay. to go and show to go and show that dress star that oh me to my same dress, yeah. my tailor, my designer is also. Huh. They then on Sunday they will bring it to church. They will not come to church early. To you come to church late for everybody to see that Charlie and let them stand it there. Hey, so, cool, la, la. so it is still happening. Yeah. Whereas our women have focused on what they wear. Therefore, another lady in the church who doesn't have when he's come when she's coming to church because she has two clothes, because she has to be repeating the clothes every fortnight, she feels that I'm not fit for the church. That was the same thing that was happening. And Paul was advising, was teaching them. And that is not the reason why you came to church. So it is not that you cannot put on makeup. My, my dear, if you have that money, buy it. Paint your face, red, gold, blue. <laughs> come to church. <laughs> if you can wear 70 inches here, wait, come, come and break that down. You buy another one, you pay off it. <laughs> you <buy> one. <laughs> Look beautiful and come to church. But don't let that be your focus. Be your focus. Yes. Wow, wow. <laughs> this is getting interesting. Wow, and I like how <laughs> the conversation is going. So <laughs> maybe you also have a point. You want to also say something about what we are discussing. You can drop it at the comment section and then we also learn from you as well. 
All right, so we want to continue the discussion on <laughs> this particular topic. <laughs> Charlie, so many things are in this particular topic. But my next question, I want to ask the woman of God. Um, we have heard a lot, okay, with this dressing, this appearance, this whole thing. The, the point is, I, I like what the man of God said. He said, if you can afford it, Charlie, be nice, look nice, be decent, modest apparel, modest apparel. come to church, okay? But what I want to ask is, you know, there are certain ladies, or not even ladies per se, but people who say that, oh, Charlie, say after all, it's my body. And I'm going to, you get it. Uh, but mostly ladies, they yeah. have So, what I wear, I can decide to uh, wear what I want. I can decide to do what I want. So far as I uh, don't know anybody, you know, this or this, you know, what do you think about, woman, what do you think about this statement as, as, as a believer, as a child of God? Is it there? It's your body. It, you know, you have And then, you have a baby, you have a because at a point, uh, Paul said, you are now fine. Now, so any now and a part time. But in this case, you see uh, some of our ladies, okay, and there are certain men also, but mostly our ladies. I can choose what I want to do. The ambassador may have the MMA from M. Found. The ambassador may have so M. Found. What is your take on this? What, what, what can you say about this? Okay, so um, I think that as a believer, you don't think of yourself. You don't think of yourself. <laughs> okay, so so long as you are a believer, you are you are part of the body of Christ. Whatever thing that you do affects the body of Christ. So if you dress indecently, if your outlook is no modest, it affects the body of Christ. Okay. So we are we are admonished as believers that whatever thing that we do should bring glory to God. So if in your outlook, the way you 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 dress, it's, it makes your salvation personal, but it actually doesn't bring glory to God. Wow. So um, I, I learned something that your character is the most expensive commodity of the world. So if as a Christian, your your character, because of the way you dress, is not really depicting who you are inside, then you are actually failing as a Christian. Wow! Wow! <laughs> this is interesting. And you know, when you become a believer, so I see here, when you become a believer, your life is no more yours. Okay. That's what Paul said, that the life that it is. Okay. It's no longer him value. Okay. So but... as a believer, it's not about you and what you do. It's not about your preferences anymore. Okay. It's about what you are supposed to do as a believer, as a Christian. So that means that what you wear matters. Yes. And, and the kind of things you do also matters. So you can't say, say, me deme on, until the ame pebi a me she, the ame pebi a me ye. As a believer, you can't, you can't say that. No. Wow, interesting. <laughs> it is getting more and more interesting. So viewers, <laughs> Charlie, who do who? Say the ame pebi a, who be tumi a she, and I say the ame pebi a be. The woman of God have explained it that as a believer, the life you live. It's no more yours. But Apostle Paul said that it is Christ that now lives in me. So please, let us be mindful of um, some of the statements we make and some of the things we do. All right, so um, let me let me move on to my, my next question. Man of God, I want to ask, okay? <laughs> I've heard preachers preach on this trousers and appearances styles. My question is, <laughs> can our parents or an appearance take someone to help your appearance can your appearance take you to help the way maybe you dress the way because in society okay and then there is a way i would dress if I, people have a way of looking at you they have a way of tagging you and people believe say oh you dress is somewhere you can go to help so i want to find out can our appearance or can an appearance send someone to help okay In the life of a believer, there was nothing like hell. Hey! <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, they are so hard. <laughs> In the life of a believer, uh -huh. there is nothing like hell. A believer is not going to be judged for heaven and hell. <laughs> we are going to be judged for good works and rewards. 
Is it a new doctrine? Oh, no, no, it's not a new doctrine. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> if, you have not seen, if you have not seen that in the whole of the epistles, then you are a lazy reader. <laughs> wow. That is <laughs> that a, a lazy one. <laughs> in fact, you are a lazy Christian. A lazy Christian. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Because <laughs> it is our spirit that was saved. Our spirit was rather saved. Yes. And even you as a believer, you didn't even have a life. You didn't have a life. You are living the life of Christ. And scripture says that this mortality will put on immortality. So what you are using this body for are the things of this world. Okay, for this world. Yes, for this world. But what, what is it is that when you are dressing, if you are going out, you are going for a party, we have nice attire for parties. Is it, and occasions also comes with their dress. If you are showing us skin, you are showing us your skin. We know you have a nice skin. Cover it. Save it for your husband. Let your husband admire it in your room. We also have our own wives. You admire their own. But these days we have women, Charlie. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I want to dress, uh, dress, dress to kill. Yes. Uh, some uh, excuse my language, but there are certain believers who even use this term. I, I, I want to be sex. I want to dress and look sex. And <laughs> if you want to look sexy, then people will start raping you by the roadside. Because true. sexy means sex. You are ready for sex. You look attractive for sex. Oh, wow. So we cut by the roadside and then they rape you. Oh, wow. These are the reason why people are raping people. But anyhow, because once you are showing them something. They want to touch that thing that you are showing them. They want to feel it. You wear, you see ladies wear, uh, how do you call it? Then they leave their entire, they are showing their entire. <laughs> I sat in a car with a lady. I think, yes, I was in the bike when I was reading. Actually, I was in the car and I was reading my mouth. And then the lady sat next to me and she asked me to push. Man of God, when I turn. <laughs> I got down with once I have not got it to my destination. Bangladesh. <laughs> you see, oh, I, it will be after the I, I can't lose focus. Man of God, I was going to I was going to preach, and I was revising my notes, and I see such a thing. And this lady was next, and she, it wasn't that when she sat down, she sat down and was, but no, Kasa of phone. So, oh, no, so, so when then she she, man of God, I got down. What are you showing me? You go down. Why won't I get down? Hey. <laughs> Man of God. You see, the way the lady was moving and hitting me, me like this, I talk. When something is not right, I will say it. We are in a public transport. You are not in your comfort zone. Do you get it? Yeah, sure. So that was one of the reasons why I got down. The other reason too was that what you are showing me, I'm not ready to watch. Yeah. And the way she's attacked, the way she, she, she was conducting herself, you have no other choice, but you can't concentrate on what you are doing. Just watch. Yes. Okay. So to save myself, okay. say, flee! Pabam. Don't even leave a tree. Wow. So I left. Okay. So what you are showing us, we are not interested. Cover it. Yes, we are not going to be judged for heaven and hell. But sometimes your attitude will bring someone to check to hear the gospel and be saved. Alright. Um, so uh, according to according to you, what we are saying is no one can go to hell for his appearance. No, if you are a believer. A believer. Yes. Wow. Hell is not part of our mission. Hell is not part of your mission of the additional as a believer. As a believer. Wow, that is it's a topic for another day because I think that that is a topic one day we must, we must yes, heaven and hell, heaven and hell, and then our, our salvation. People have a lot of uh, misunderstanding and misconception when it comes to our salvation. When you are saved, is that all? One saved, whatever saved. I think one day we we'll have to talk, tackle some of these uh, questions to clear the minds of people. All right, um, <laughs> viewers, it is getting more interesting, so you can drop your comments also. Maybe there is a question you want to ask. You can also drop the question there. We will attend to that question for you. 
I want to ask my final, my, my final question. Okay, it's not even a question, it's, it's a statement. All right, um, woman of God, let me come to you. These days, okay, you walk and then you hear preachers or you see preachers, some, I may say, tagged as evangelists. And the way they are preaching, it looks as though we are attacking our ladies who wear these trousers and who do not appear well to them. Okay? Maybe their dressing is not modest. And the way they attack them is almost as though they are condemning and they are judging them. And some of these preachers preach in a way that, oh, your banner now share trousers are. You've already booked your ticket to hell. And <laughs> it is serious. That's a little so, Woman of God, what what advice or what what do you have to say to preachers who do because today we have a lot of these preachers in the system. Maybe I have to be a you meet one. Maybe I have to be a you meet one. And the kind of things they are saying, the judgment and condemnation and all that. So what do you have to say to these preachers if there is any advice you have for these preachers? Okay, so I think that um, in Romans chapter 14, verse 13, okay. let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but rather, but judge this rather, that no man be, but that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. And when you read the entire scripture, you realize that Paul talking about the fact that some people think that um, when you eat this, you are condemned when you don't eat that you are condemned when you do this you are condemned and all that i think the whole thing is if you put on trousers it shouldn't be a reason why you should judge someone who doesn't put on trousers if you don't put on trousers don't condemn or judge the one who puts on trousers that is to say that probably some, there are some people who actually do not like trousers on their own not because of scriptures or anything some people do not like trousers it shouldn't be a reason for you to judge someone who, who actually puts on trousers. And if you're a preacher and you think that hmm, there are some scriptures, some people shouldn't do certain things or wear certain kind of clothing. But I think that you should spend time reading the Bible. Don't just read for your personal interest, but read. Don't read with your own understanding. Sit down, take time, take a note in your Bible and write. Read and write very well. Don't just go through it and then pick, pick, pick some scriptures and then oh, run with yes. this. Yes, lifting them is not going to help. If you really want to get the entire concept of the whole scripture, read the whole thing. All right. And finally, man of God, um, what is your take also on um, what we are talking about? Second Timothy three sixteen. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness, that the man that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. None of the scriptures were for condemnation, were for judgment. Rather, for teaching, for reproof, for correction. So, if someone appearance is not in accordance with the life of a believer, correct the person. No. Thank you, man. Correction in love. I, I love this woman of God. I love, I love <laughs> the woman of God. Correction in love. You are condemning the person. Maybe you are stealing. <laughs> Maybe you are stealing. You see, I always say that laziness eh, is what comes about, is what brings about error. If you don't spend time, or people would want to, I saw this particular and what she was wearing was not good. I'm going to talk about this stuff. We are selfish man, a selfish preacher. You see, we are not preaching to condemn people. We are preaching to bring people because it says that I want all men to be saved. Right. That is what we are supposed to do, and what. A, a prophet, a teacher, an apostle. That is to perfect the saints. We perfect the saints. There is no way I have seen that the duty of the leaders in the church was to condemn people. 
So let let the scriptures help us to correct people. Let the person come to the good words, but not to condemn them. I, I don't like it when people sit in. I, I was telling my child the other time that if your pastor is always preaching about demonic attacks, every day you see demonic attacks in your life. So if every day you are preaching the person about, you are condemning the person about the dressing, the person will not feel like coming to the church again. But when you, you, you bring, you draw the person closer, and then you teach the person in love, the person needs a change for you. That is what I have to say. Wow. Um, please, can I? Okay. Am I yeah, you, you can. You can. I think I'd want to make this statement that let us not let culture and traditions cause division in the church. Because if if we earlier said that culture determines what someone wears, so if culture determines what you wear, and you know we have different different cultures in Ghana here, we have so many cultures. So if my culture doesn't permit me to wear certain things, I shouldn't condemn those whose cultures actually mm-hmm. permit them to wear certain clothes. Get it? So we shouldn't let our culture and tradition cause division in the church because for the church we are one body. All right, so <laughs> viewers, um, today has been more revealing and then um, exciting. So, um, like we are saying, please, preachers, people of God, men of God, women of God, let us be careful with some of the messages that we bring on board, the way we we, we, we condemn. Okay, the way we judge people, as a matter of truth, like that, like uh, 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 Mama, the people of God are saying here, yeah, God wants all men to be saved. So if your message is rather driving people out, then there is a problem with what you are saying. You get it? God wants every individual to be saved. The Muslim, the fetish priest, the Buddhist, the Hindus, everybody needs salvation. And so your message should not be about condemnation. Rather, your message should be about love. That will bring and draw men to God. Because uh, God commended his love towards us. In that, whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Alright, so um, viewers, this is where we, we, we bring an end to um, today's uh, meeting or today's particular program. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share with your friends. Who do not have access to this channel so that they also have access to the channel and also drop your comment if there is any question you want to ask if there is something bothering your mind you want an explanation to you can just drop it at the comment section and then we'll attend to it and your life will never be the same again so i've been your host today and this has been my my, my wonderful uh, panelist the woman of god and then my evil man of god here will come your, your way again but until then stay safe be blessed Bye, 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 bye.